Come on in, round round in. You can jump in the shower. It looks like a nice day outside. Let's go and have a look. Dry. Come on, round in. Get ready for the march. This is what we um, wake up to. This is our community. Good in the morning. Nice and fresh. Beautiful day for a protest anyway. I hope Arnangos come, you know, really. A lot of people be getting ready and I actually, it's interesting. A lot of people are on the, um, on the Facebook, a lot of messages, a lot of inboxes, people that can't make it, you know, they getting ready. Wish I didn't have this stupid leg that's gone funny for me today. But that's not going to stop me, nothing. When people, if people just come and look at their community like this here, and they sit in this moment, it just looks so good, so peaceful, so you'd want to be here. But there's this undercurrent. I can feel the heaviness underneath us. It takes away the beautifulness. So today is really important just for that. Today, there's going to be a noise. There's going to be talk in this town. There's going to be big disruption in our town, but not only in Portugal, I think. It'll be all over this nation. And when I look, it's good that, that people in other countries are fighting or standing up anyway. But we'll be up with the hustle and bustle and <laughs> getting out there. And it's interesting, though, I've had a lot of phone calls and, and inboxes and stuff, you know, that tell, tell us that why, we, why should we we'd make more enemies than we would friends um, in terms of um, closing down this bridge in Port Augusta. But, you know, that's significant in itself because that bridge every year has to be fixed because of the... Um, it expands and then it comes back in. So when you, when you look at that, it needs, it needs care every year. So at night, and it's just happens to be this same week it's getting it gets fixed and they close a the lane down every you know um, from six o'clock at night to about um, 11 or or early hours of the morning um, while they're doing works on there um, but you know when we look at our um, when we look at community people can just buy a stroke of a pen just muck around with people's lives. Yeah, we'll just we'll just get out there and um, let the world know just where what we as Aboriginal people are facing. It's a very you know there's war on the home front. But anyway, we got to get up. We got to go and go and round up the troops and um, get down the beach and see because there's we're putting up signs down the beach this morning. Yes, you can. All the people walking over there. Ready?
the two Aboriginal boomerangs up the front, then everybody to march um, behind that. Once we get to the uh, a place where we're going to be sitting down on the bridge, um, all the speakers will commence. Then we'll then proceed down towards the foreshore um, where there will be some closing speeches and we'll have a bit of a feed and some just only a couple of comments and then we'll thank everybody for coming. Well said, Now let's make some noise. Let's let, let's get a rock and roll in here in Port Augusta. And listen from the Bungalow people, we want to welcome you all here. We're one people, so let's stick together all the time, not just today, okay? Yeah. 60 minutes for 60,000 years, what do you reckon? I want, I want a, a minute of silence um, in, ready to um, acknowledge the passing of all our people and what the government is doing to our people today. So a minute of silence in recognition and, and acknowledgement of what, what is about to happen. <coughs> Thank you. Hey, good to see you, Mob here. Balia? Yeah. What we must have, what? Four or five hundred people standing here. That minute silence is real strong when you got that many people standing together in unity. Hey, so good to have you all here. And I'm Stephen Atkinson for you, Mob who don't know. 
You know why we stand there today, are you, mob? For the forced closures of communities, against the forced closures of communities. Now, they're saying it's only WA, but it's not only WA. They're doing it right across the country now. Only last week, the federal government paid the Northern Territory, the New South Wales, Victorian state governments, and still trying to get South Australia to look after their communities in the states instead of being federally funded. They took $570 million off us last year, and now they're giving each state something like $100 million to look after the communities without any continuation, any guarantee of continued funding. So what they're trying to do is shut us all down. So that's deadly, it's all out here in solidarity with them communities. And pity we couldn't have all our own Gajuda down here with us because we're standing up for them. We're standing up for Davenport. We're standing up for all the missions, reserves, communities right around the country. But it all started here. This shutdown idea started here in Port Augusta. That's why it's uh, great to see everyone here. It was Levine's idea to shut down Australia over a 60 minute strike. 60 minutes strike for 60,000 year old culture. Uh, and that's why we're holding them boomerangs. Tony Abbott sat there and he held a boomerang and he said that Australia was open for business. Well, that's ours. And we stand there saying, we're going to shut down Australia if you're going to shut down Aboriginal communities. We can't let this go on. Hold them boomerangs up. I've been saying right from the start of this, forced closures of communities. And that's why us, us what is walked up the front there. Because what they're doing by closing down these communities, they're trying to stop our culture. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take away our law and stop us, our next generations. Stop us, because that's our sovereignty. That is what gives us our sovereign right to be men in our own country. And if they take that away, we're, we're going to have nothing left. So that's why we marched up the front to let them know, hold them boomerangs. You're going to hold, you're going to shut us down, we're going to shut you down. So we, here, this, we got the oldest living culture in the world and they're trying to stop it. This government should be proud to have the oldest living you know, culture in the world in their doorstep, but instead they want to try and close it down. So maybe it's time to really start doing something strong and standing up against this government and standing in solidarity, in unity, together, all the tribes, all as one. Always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. Always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. Always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. Hold them boomerangs up. Always was. Always will be Aboriginal land. They, they're going to shut down the schools. They're already trying to shut down the schools up in APY, and they've already brought out a policy for it to put all the children off that lands into the schools in the regional areas. So they're going to try and make all the kids go from Annabella, and apparently they've already taken the, their teachers away from Annabella. So they're doing it now while we're here on this bridge. They're shutting them down. They're going to put them all, make them go to Alice Springs to get educated. And what the, the family's going to be worrying for their children. So they're going to you know, move to Alice Springs to be with their children. So they, they're not in our face telling us they're going to shut down our communities. They're doing it behind our backs. They're doing it by stealth. So this is why we need to all come together on days like today and stand up against the closures of communities. Because the government's not going to tell us, they're just going to do it. Instances to be here to um, protest against what the Australian government is doing to us as, um, um, and basically declaring war on the First Nations people of this country. So when your rights are under attack, stand up, fight back. So we're going to do that a few times. When your rights are under attack, Stand up, fight back. When your rights are under attack. Stand up, fight back. When your rights are under attack. Stand up, fight back.
you know, Davenport community, um, that's the community that we all know where Davenport community, let's point to where Davenport is. <laughs> and who has family that live on Aboriginal communities? Put your hand up. Put it up high. Who has family that live on Aboriginal communities? Me! Who has family that live on Aboriginal homeland? Me! Has ever got the right to try and shut down our culture? No! Has he got the right to interfere with our culture? No! Has he got the right to shut down our communities? No! Has he got the right to shut down our homeland? No! So what are we going to do when your rights are under attack? Stand up! And that's what we need to do, people. We're not even under the um, under the constitution, and they're still imposing these laws. What if we, if we go um, if we go under that? It's going to be even worse because then they got the right to take everything away from us. But that's what our next speaker is going to speak about. Kamina Aboriginal community um, had their doors closed six weeks ago. The um, people just came in and turned their lights off and turned the water off and left about 60 people on the community with no water and no lights. So, so, and this is a true story. But yeah, we buried loved ones there. I buried my dumbbells there and my grandmothers and my aunties and my uncles. So why should we be moved from there? You know, they closed Kundalini some 20 years ago, give us Kunana, and then they turn around and close that on us. There's still about 30 people sitting out there with no water and no electricity. So they're not gonna move. So they're running in and out of Kalgoorlie to go and get water and, and, and food to keep it going. And they're lighting candles, so they're going back to the old age. And, and we're going to stand strong. And then now the story goes that my community in Mount Margaret, they've just put 22 new housing there. So they're making super communities. Believe me, they are making super communities. We couldn't get housing for a long, long time. All of a sudden, in the last 12 months, we've got 22 new houses built on Mount Margaret community so that we can bring people there and close more, more communities down. That's all through the um, Ngandara land. So there's going to be another four communities closed down and our people are going to be affected because they're going to go into the communities where there's going to be ex exposure to drugs and alcohol and more disruption. But we're talking about humanity. We're talking about people's lives. That's who we're talking about and the government is not worrying about people's lives. We're talking about human rights here. Our families want to live on the land. You know, that's where they, they choose to live. And they talk about lifestyle choices. When Abbott made that, um, that um, comment about lifestyle choices, he was actually standing in the streets of Kalgoorlie when he made that. So he was standing on our street, on one guy country, and making that, made that um, comment about lifestyle communities because he saw the people on the community in Kalgoorlie laying in the streets with nothing, already homeless, because they've been driven out of their communities. So what we're saying here is we're fighting for our communities, not only here and not, you know, in Port Augusta. We got a message on Friday that um, the, the Narangeri community, with the new funding, they've got $41,000 to keep Ralkin open. Is $41,000 going to keep Ralkin community open? No! So it's already happening in South Australia. They got their message on Friday to stop, that they didn't get all their money to keep their community open. So it's already happening. They're cutting funds in South Australia. Hey? It is genocide. So just be aware, it's going to come to us. So thank you for allowing me to speak, and that's it. Aboriginal people, we have tribes. We have nations of people and countries. What they are doing, they are taking people and putting them in different countries. And that's, they, they're just stripping us. We must stand up and fight against all these people because we got we got to teach our children our way, our laws, and our ways of land. And this is what we've got. This is the thing that I, I'm really worried about: our song lines, our storylines, and everything. We've got they're taking us away from everything. Well, it's true. What the government is doing is what we call cultural genocide. What they're also doing is assimilation, taking our people away from where they belong and trying to make them someone else. 
what they're also doing is creating laws, racist laws, that we have to live by. You know what? It's time that we take our true place and claim our sovereign rights. It's time we claimed our sovereign rights of this country. It is ours. You know, what of our society very strong. We have our laws. Very strong. We are a strong, strong group of people. We need to stand in solidarity and claim our sovereign rights. So, we want sovereignty. When do we all want it? Now! Sovereignty! Now! What do we want? Sovereignty! Now. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Sovereignty! sovereignty. When do we want it? Now! There's a Senate inquiry going, as you know, into what all this money that's called Aboriginal money is and where it really goes. The early the early figures that are being touted around at the moment are that 55% of the Indigenous advancement money has gone to government departments and large organisations that are not Aboriginal organisations. The, the next figure that's circulating is that they have got 75% of the money that people call Aboriginal money. Now, we know that there's a lot of ill feeling because Aboriginal people are believed to get all this Aboriginal money, and it's not true. And that's something that people need to stand up about and fight back about. To get the true story out about who really gets Aboriginal money because it's not Aboriginal people. Yeah! It's in real terms and in real dollars and it's the Aboriginal people who suffer. Until this country recognises Aboriginal culture and Aboriginal people take their rightful place, we can never go forward. At the moment we're going backwards at a rapid rate. You know, we had the apology yeah, great, but nothing's changed. Nothing came with the apology. What's the point of saying sorry if it, you don't mean it? If it doesn't mean anything, if nothing changes. Since then, we've had, you know, 534 million cut from Aboriginal um, money, so-called Aboriginal money last year, just last year. When are we going to get it right as a country? As non-Aboriginal people, we need to be paying the rent. The government needs to be paying the rent. We all need to be standing up against injustices for Aboriginal people in this country, and it's not happening. You've got to come clear with the atrocities that they've done to Aboriginal people in the past.
talking to see our, our kids here that have come because we were those kids when our parents were marching and I was having a um, yarn with my father um, last week and he said when he was 22 years old he was marching for the same things we're marching and protesting today on. So that's really interesting that he's saying when he was 22, I won't tell you his age now, but it's over 70, that we still are marching for our rights as Aboriginal people. So when we see that the government is um, interfering with this, and if we don't stand up, then we're not, we're not continuing the fight of what our old people passed on to us. We must never forget the foundation that they have um, laid down for us. We have to keep on fighting and, and keep on standing up for what is rightfully ours. And I also would like to acknowledge the non-Aboriginal people that are here um, in support and standing in solidarity with us as Aboriginal people because we can't do it alone. We are the minority in our own country. I just want to thank you all for coming. On behalf of the Bungalow people and standing here in our country, you're just making us all proud to be here as one. It's not about Bungalow today, it's not about anyone, it's about all of us, all tribes, all nations, standing together in solidarity against the false closures of the community. And I think we've made a great statement here today. We've had a few hundred people here, we shut down the beach for an hour. We made them listen to us today. And I thank all you guys for that. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been able to do it. I think if they close the communities, they'll, they'll, we'll talk about cultural genocide on the bridge, and I think that cultural genocide taking away those communities takes away where we hold our traditional law, our culture. And me being part of that, it, it, it would be a travesty to lose that for the next generations of, of men and women and so forth. And this is what gives us our strength, our sovereignty, our right to be the people we are today. And this has gone on from time memorial. It, it, it's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Like we know, it's the oldest living culture in the world. So to lose that living culture, which I'm proud to say I'm part of, to me would be a travesty. You know, I want that to be there for 
my sons, my grandsons, my great grandsons. I want that there to be part of you know life in Australia forever for Aboriginal people. So closing down communities is going to affect that. It's going to further uh, hinder our, our culture, our law. They're, they've already pulled back. You know, the East Coast has pretty much almost lost all of its, its traditional law and, and those values because uh, of white settlement, invasion, whatever you want to call it, that's pushed those uh, special things, those sacred things of ours, into the remote areas because we can't do these things in, in the middle of towns and in, in the prying eyes. We must do it separately away from everyone. So, you know, because of the population boost on the East Coast, a lot of that's gone. There's hardly any of it left. So now they're infringing onto the remote communities. It's going to do the same thing in those areas, start to push that sacred culture, that sacred ceremonial things away from those areas, which will be an absolute travesty. It will be pretty much the end of the traditional living culture of Australia, which is the oldest in the world. And I think that, to me, is the most personal and most important part to me. Communities in the remote areas or in Western Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, you know, Victoria, that have been affected through this whole process, what they call as normalising communities, you know, saying that we as the people we as Aboriginal people got to be um, become equal with mainstream Australia. Where's the equality? It's never been there. I just love my community. We've done things without signing anything in order to improve services because and the reason why we did that is because the government always, you know, they say, oh, sign this and we'll deal with it later. But being there, done that, um, and seen a lot of people, you know, communities doing that. And I said, nah, we're not going to do it that way. We're actually going to do the reverse. You do it in good faith, as in your words. And in good faith, we'll have a look at the agreements. So, we sh you show that you can commit to us beforehand. And that meant that for us, and this sort of like, when we see like the roads down there, those roads have all been done. When you drove in, you've seen the roads here, they sort of be um, fixed up. The whole, whole talk around Australia is about um, the, the federal government taking away their response. They're no longer gonna have the responsibility of providing essential services to communities and they're handing the responsibility to the state and the states will then hand over responsibilities to local council and then we all know what that means. Abbott reminds me a bit like um, Pontius Pilate washing his hands of the blood of Jesus and saying he had no responsibility to do it. It was going to be the people that were going to do it. Yep, he was the one in, in control. This is no different to that. You can't just wash your hands away. And the federal government are washing their hands clean and saying they are not responsible. They have no responsibility over communities. So therefore, you know, and, and we know if you if you remove people off the land, their souls will forever be destroyed. We've just got to look at what happened with the stolen generations and how people have never ever recovered from that. That severing of the ties. This is not just about closing the communities and don't let anyone fool you. Don't let the government fool you into thinking that this is a war on First Nations people, fellow Australians out there. Should be. This is where, if you're going to talk true reconciliation, then this is where you've got to stand up and be counted. You can't be sitting back because it's communities like Davenport and that, that are still under the threat. You have to really look at, you've got to really look at agreements, or documents, whatever that, that the mining companies are offering people. You have to really look at it. This whole agreement that they talk about is, they talk about you, you're only going to get essential services if the government 
so the state can secure land tenure. They don't tell that, they, you, you see everyone's talking about essential services. But underneath that is the land tenure, so you have to give away your land, you have to give away that for nothing. Shocking, shocking. This is, you know, like um, with the marches and protests in the 60s, this is where we're at today. You know, is history going to repeat itself? Or are we going to be a part of the history of change? because change, change starts with us. Who is gonna be the next fighters? Who's gonna be the next leaders that are standing up? Is there someone in our community, someone in your community? Is there someone here that is gonna drive the Aboriginal people forward for better? How can we dance?